everyone, welcome back to Let's Talk. My name is John, and today we're going to be continuing in our reviews of the entire Friday the 13th franchise, and we are up to Friday the 13th, the final chapter, released back in 1984. This was supposed to be the concluding chapter in the Friday the 13th franchise. Of course it was not, because we had eight more films come out after this one. This one was directed by Joseph Zito. This one had a budget of about $2.2 million, and continuing the trend of making money for Paramount Studios, this one made $33 million at the box office. But for some reason, Paramount actually wanted to end the franchise with Part 3, but because they didn't promote it, they decided to make a fourth film, and this one would be the concluding chapter. And the reason for that is because Paramount was apparently pretty embarrassed by the franchise, and that's why Frank Manicoso Jr. decided to produce this one, because he felt like he wasn't getting enough credit. This franchise was a moneymaker for Paramount, but because the critics were just crapping all over it, you know, these movies were never Academy Award winning films, the acting was never really good, but they do serve a purpose, and that purpose is entertainment. Not every movie needs to be so highfalutin, so highbrow, some movies are just there to entertain you, and that's what the slasher genre was there to do. But at the time in 1984, believe it or not, the slasher genre was seen as falling and fading away, and this was going to be the end of it. And I have a theory that in 1984, the reason why it was able to recover and get us through the rest of the 1980s is because of A Nightmare on Elm Street came out that year and I feel like that kind of rejuvenated the horror franchise and of course a major studio could not just turn away money so they decided to make more Friday the 13th films and that's why we ended up with Friday the 13th A New Beginning. But we're not here today to talk about that. We're talking about Friday the 13th The Final Chapter which is actually one of the most popular films in the entire franchise. Usually it's up near the top of most people's rankings of the franchise and it's pretty high up on my list as well. You bring back Tom Savini to do the special effects and man that stuff shows so so well and this movie starts off right where part three ended you know we see that jason's dead we get that nice awesome opening shot in the rain which a lot of these movies do open in the rain and they really are so effective in that sense so atmospheric really creating that autumn tone and we see that jason's getting taken to the morgue but of course he comes back to life and he has to continue on with what he was doing but he's not going to the camp this time he's gonna go to a couple houses that are along the lake and that's where he's going to start tormenting a family. And that family is the Jarvis family. And for the first time, we get to meet Tommy Jarvis. And this film, played by Corey Feldman, each of the three films that Tommy Jarvis appears in is played by a different actor. So don't expect any continuity there, especially even when it comes to the age of the character. But this time, it's played by Corey Feldman, one of the most famous actors of the 1980s, especially in the child actor sense. You know, he would appear throughout many classic films in the 1980s, like Stand By Me, The Goonies, and even The Lost Boys, he pops up. So Corey Feldman is a big time actor in the 1980s. You know, he acted before this, but this is probably one of his most famous roles as a young actor. Also, you get Crispin Glover in this movie. So this actually had somewhat star power before they all took off. Probably the most star power in any fraud of the 13th franchise. And this movie is probably also the most entertaining of it. Kind of getting away from what made the franchise work. You know, he's not going around killing people at the summer camp. He's actually just going through houses and ruining families and ruining friendships. And that's what he's doing in this movie. And this one is just so violent in comparison to the other ones. It's actually sad how Jason basically just ruins this entire family, just takes them all out one by one, leaving Tommy on his own, and he has to fend for himself. I mean, the sister does survive as well at the end of this film, but you know that this family is just broken after losing the patriarch of the family, their mother. And that was really going for it back in 1984. We're really used to these characters getting what, getting their comeuppance. Yes, a lot of the characters in the other house next door to this, you know, that's where the real teenagers are. They're the ones drinking, doing drugs, and having sex. So we expect those characters to die. You know, a lot of them are assholes. Crispin Glover's kind of an asshole. We really expect those characters to die. We don't expect the mother next door to die as well. That one actually really does hurt. And a lot of the deaths in this movie are just so violent and done so, so well. That's what you bring in Tom Savini for us for those special effects. And he wanted to come back because he wanted to kill off the character that he helped create from the first Friday of the 13th film. And he does a fantastic job with the effects. And that's actually why Corey Feldman's character in this film is obsessed with, you know, masks and everything and creating masks. That was kind of an homage to Tom Savini and what he's contributed to the horror genre and the special effects sense. And it's really awesome to see them do that here. And it's one of the most memorable things about about Tommy Jarvis. That's one thing about this film 
is that it sets up the main antagonist, if you consider Jason the protagonist in this film, is setting him up to be somebody who can finally take Jason down. And he does take him down at the end of this film, but that's not the end of the journey. We would have two more films in the franchise. Well, two more films in the Tommy Jarvis storyline of the franchise. They would keep going all the way through 2009, and people still want them to make another film to this very day. Maybe we'll get lucky and they will. But overall, Friday the 13th, The New Beginning, is still a very entertaining chapter in the Friday the 13th franchise. Still a lot of fun. You know, it's not too long. You know what you're in for. And I think this one kind of playing with what we know with the aspect of the Friday the 13th franchise. I really do think that they did a good job and made an entertaining slasher film. And I'm really glad they didn't end the franchise here because I really think it had a lot more to contribute to the horror genre in general. But this one is definitely one of the better ones, the best one so far. If I was going to rank them right now, it would go the final chapter chapter part three part two part one so i feel like they've gotten better at least to this point as we've gone along but a new beginning is right around the corner and i know that's a lot of people's least favorite in the franchise but if you haven't seen friday the 13th the final chapter i could definitely recommend it and we're also here today to talk about its scream factory blu-ray that came out back in 2020 but before we dive into that if you are a fan of blu-ray reviews movie reviews lists podcasts and shorts we try to do them all here on the channel and nothing will help this channel out more than by just simply liking this video and subscribing to the channel. And we're back with our beautiful Scream Factory Blu-ray box set that came out in 2020 right here. I can't stress enough to you how beautiful this box set is. You can get it right now on Amazon, Scream Factory, Shout Factory, wherever you want to grab it. You can still get it. And to have every single film in the franchise in one beautiful box set is just awesome. So we're going to go inside. We're going to pull out the final chapter, which is right here. This one's a one-disc set, which is Pretty much common except for the first film in the box set, but this one's a one disc set. You get interior box art, just what Scream Factory always used to do with their releases on Blu-ray. Before we went to 4K and the black boxes came along, they always used that interior box art, individual disc design. Scream Factory always paid attention to the little details, and that is no different here with this box set. And this is one of the films in this that received a brand new 4K scan of the original camera negative. This is the best looking film in the box set thus far. It really does just look beautiful. Obviously, it's not a 4K, so you don't get HDR or Adobe Vision over it, but it really does clean up the film. I've seen this film many, many times in the past on Blu-ray, DVD, and on VHS, and this film has looked rough, but it always did add to the charm of the Friday the 13th franchise is how rough and gritty and grainy it always looked and there's still a good amount of film grain here so they didn't wipe that all away but it's nothing that's going to overwhelm the scene so it is a fantastic scan visually now audio wise just like the previous ones it's going to start in a 2.0 mono track I recommend personally turning on the 5.1 track on there. Now, you got to do that yourself. It's not going to start in the alternate 5.1. You're going to have to switch it yourself. And there's also two audio commentary tracks, including one with the director. So that is pretty damn cool as well. They really sprung for all the bells and whistles when it comes to these discs. Like I've said in previous reviews, we do have a full bonus disc that's at the very end of this box set. It's the last disc in here. So if you want to watch all the bonus features, they're on there. But each film got their own individual extras and i really really appreciate that i have to call them out for that because i think that is just so awesome you get little making ofs on here little featurettes and there's a good amount for the final chapter probably more than part three and part two not as much as part one which is to make sense because part one is the most iconic film in the franchise it's the one that started it all but the final chapter is one of the most popular ones you get interviews with tom savini the director it's just a great great amount of extras on here trailers posters you get it all i'm really glad that they included all of these on this blu-ray disc i really think that helps to make this even more valuable than it already is and for one of the most popular films in the franchise and one of the better made films in the franchise it really is cool to dive into those and they just did a great job with this disc if this was sold on its own i can definitely recommend it but so far this is the best disc in the franchise that i have seen thus far in the box set so if i was going to rate this film and it's Blu-ray on a score of 1 to 10. I would still give this one a very solid 8.5 out of 10. The best this far. And so far, I'm really enjoying my rewatch of this franchise. What do you guys think? Are you enjoying the rewatch? Are you enjoying all the Friday the 13th films? Do you feel like this far, they are all pretty damn solid and they don't start to fall off and, you know, kind of start getting a little bit shaky once we get later in the franchise? I want to know your thoughts in the comment section below. And while you guys are down there, don't forget to like this video, subscribe to the channel, Get out in those streets and tell your friends about us. We'll be seeing you around.